Hey, Chemstars, this is Mrs. Vandoy bringing you Chemstar video 9.2 number one. All right, so what we're going to do in this part is that we're going to learn how to make basic mole to mole calculations. So we're talking about like that mole ratio idea that we introduced last uh, section there, okay? So it says chemical calculations. In lab, it is the only practical work with moles of substances rather than individual atoms or molecules. Why? Because they're so small. And so we interpret our equations as ratio of moles or as a mole ratio. All right, so the mole ratio is unknown over known. All right, um, and a mole ratio is a conversion factor derived from the coefficients of a balanced equation. All right, in chemical calculations, mole ratios are used to convert between moles of reactants and moles of product, between moles of reactants or between moles of products. Okay, so it could be really anything. Okay, um, so let's go to the next page. Okay, so we have two moles of magnesium, one mole of oxygen, and two moles of magnesium oxide. This is our balanced equation. So for every two moles of magnesium burned, one mole of oxygen is required to produce two moles of magnesium oxide or a ratio of two to one to two. So this is our mole ratio relationship to make predictions of how much we need something or how much we can make. Okay. So making predictions. Okay, this is super de duper important. Okay. You're going to hear about these BCA tables from now to the end of the chapter, okay? So um, really pay attention in this section. In every reaction, there are three stages we need to consider to make good predictions. B is before, C is change, A is after. So before, what uh, we have before the reaction takes place, how much do we start with? Okay, change. How much of each substance actually changes during the reaction? How much is going to be used up? All right, how, my, how much is actually going to be made? After, how much of each substance is present after the reaction is complete? So some good organization can help us uh, in making good predictions. Okay, we have organized a table that can help us track the BCA, the before, change, and after. So this right here is the basic setup. So notice that we have moles in the entire table because why? Because these coefficients are mole ratio. So everything must be in terms of moles. So this is how much I start with. This is how much I start with. And notice I already can put a number in here. You never start with any of your product. You haven't made it yet. So this will always be zero moles, okay? Notice during the change, we're going to be subtracting moles from the, each of the reactants, and we're going to be adding moles from each of the, the, the products. We only got one in this case. And then after is subtract, subtract, and zero plus whatever is going to be that, that value. All right, so it says NB. What the heck is NB? NB is Latin, all right, um, for nota bene, uh, which a literal translation be note well, all right? Probably us Americans say, take note, all right? So you would want to star this. You'd want to circle this. You want to highlight this. You want to um, note well what we're going to be talking about, note bene. Uh, so whenever you use the BCA table, all quantities must, in capital letters, be in moles, nothing else. So if you are not given moles, you must convert to moles, okay? What else? The two letters, X, S, if you say it right, excess means excess, all right? Or there's more enough of something. For example, when something burns in air, you're assuming you have plenty of oxygen, uh, O2, or oxygen is in excess, if you have plenty of it, okay? When we breathe, we don't worry about running out of oxygen, I hope, all right? Because why? There is plenty of it. There is excess of it, right? So note those two things well, all right? Okay, so here's our first example of how do we actually do this. Hydrogen sulfide gas burns in air to produce sulfur dioxide and water. How many moles of oxygen gas we need to completely burn 2.4 moles of hydrogen sulfide? How many moles of each product are made? All right, so write and balance the equation. What will this do? This describes the reaction and its mole ratio, all right? So what do we start with? We start off with hydrogen sulfide uh, gas burns in air. Well, what part of air is it burning? Is it burning the nitrogen? 
Is it burning the carbon dioxide? No, it's burning the oxygen. So I start with H2S gas and oxygen gas to produce. So what does that mean? Yields, right? What am I making? Sulfur dioxide. How do you write down sulfur dioxide? I got one S and two O's, all right, and water. All right, so now I have to balance it. If you were listening carefully, if you remember the last chapter, I would balance the oxygens for last. Why would I do that? Because it shows up one, two, three spots, okay? So I'm going to go two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfur, one sulfur. Well, that didn't help, all right? Now I have two oxygens and two plus one is three oxygens. So listen carefully. This is how I'm going to do this. Because this is an even number of oxygens, no matter what the coefficient I put out in front here, it will be an even number of oxygens, right? One times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six. They're all even numbers. So this side has to be an even number. Well, there's an odd number here, so I'm going to put a two here just so I have an even number. All right, so what does this do for me now? I now have how many hydrogens? Four. So I need to put a what over here? A two. Two times four, or two times two is four, right? Oh, no, now what? My sulfurs are off. How many sulfurs do I now have? Two. So what should I put out in front of the uh, S? I'll put a two. All right, let's do our actions now. Has that helped me any? Well, what's two times two? Four plus two is six. So what times two is six? Three. So there's my balance equation. So that is my mole ratio of two moles of hydrogen sulfide and three moles of oxygen gas produces two moles of sulfur dioxide and two moles of water vapor. All right, so now we need to fill out our BCA table. So this is fill in the before line with the given information. Mark what you must find on the table with units. All right, so what do I know? Let's read this. Go back up here. Hydrogen sulfide gas burns in air to produce sulfur dioxide. How many moles of oxygen gas would be needed? All right, uh, to completely burn 2.4 moles of hydrogen sulfide. So what is my assumption? My assumption is that I have 2.4 moles of hydrogen gas. All right. What else do I assume? I have excess moles of oxygen. Why? I need to know how much I have. I'm assuming I have plenty of it to know how much of it I need. What's something else I promised you you can fill out right now? This is zero moles because it's a product. And this is a zero mole because it's a product. Your products always start off with zero moles. I would write that down if I were you, that your products always start with zero moles. All right, so what is it that they're trying to find? All right, so Mark, I, I'm going to do it this way. All right, this is what I want. How many moles of oxygen do I need? And how many moles of each product do I have? Okay, well, this I'm just marking off. This is what they're asking me for. So what units... Well, I need, I want moles here. They would ask how many moles of oxygen are needed and how many moles of each product are required. Okay. By the way, I'm also going to put this little thing here. Okay. I like having a line there because it reminds me I'm going to be subtracting or adding. Okay. All right. Next. Oh, sorry. Assume uh, reactants that you don't have amounts for are present with more than enough excess. All right. So they didn't tell me. Let's go back here. They tell me how many um, moles of oxygen I have? No. If they don't even mention the amount of oxygen, I'm assuming it's an excess. Okay. All right. Now what? It says use the ratio of coefficient to determine this change made to determine the C. All right. So once again, I'm going to put this line here. All right. And notice that we already had two moles here. This is from the step above. Excess here, zero here, and zero here. All right, so now we need the change, all right? So I'm going to assume, there's a lot of assumptions here, isn't there? I am going to use up each and every one 
of my H2S, all right? So I'm gonna subtract this amount, okay? Um, so however much I start with, I'm assuming I will use it all up. Why? Because I have plenty of this, I'm not gonna use it up. So if I'm not gonna use up this one, I'm gonna use up this one, okay? So look at this, you see what I starred a lot? You might wanna highlight this, you might wanna star this, all right? You might wanna make note of this. This is important, okay? Divide by the first coefficient by what you have, multiply by the second coefficient of what you want. So you ready? Do you have a calculator? See if you need a calculator. I, I mean, maybe you can do it in your head, all right? Let's find out. So what do I mean by this? Pay attention. Take 2.4. Divide it by two. All right, what's 2.4 divided by two? 1.2, right? What's 1.2 times three? I think it's 3.6, isn't it? Notice there's a subtraction here. Why? It's a reactant. We subtract. We'll try it again. What's 2.4 divided by two? 1.2. What's 1.2 times two? 2.4. So again, what's 2.4 divided by 2? 1.2. What's 1.2 times 2? 2.4. Is it any wonder that, notice that these three have the same coefficient. Did you notice that? And look at your change. They are the same. Think about that. All right. So it says, notice that the reactants are consumed. All right. They, they decrease. There we go. Oops. Brought that down. I didn't want to. All right. And the products are what? Are increasing. All right. So notice I have that. Yes, I've done that. Okay. So notice that my reactants, I am decreasing. My products are increasing. All right, so let's see what step four is. Okay, so step four, complete the table for what remains after the reaction is complete. All right, so once again, I wanna draw this line here. All right, uh, again, it helps me know that this is like a math equation um, with a line there. So what do I do first? I'm gonna put um, all my befores that we start off with. Remember, though, this is important, note bene, that um, we don't have any products to start with, okay? So remember how we figured out the change. We took this, you know, that 2.4 divided by 2 times 3, that was your 3.6. Oh, by the way, this is what we want. This is, this is what we want. And this is what we want. I forgot about that. All right. And so that's where the 3.6 came from. And then 2.4 divided by 2 times 2 is 2.4. And 2.4 divided by 2 times 2 is 2.4, right? So what we do next is that we complete. We do the math, all right? What's 2.4 minus 2.4? It is dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -bum, 0. All right, so what is a huge amount? What if I had, like, you know, a 1,000 pennies? I take away 3. Don't I have still a lot of pennies left? Yes. So if you ever have excess minus something, it's still an excess. You still have plenty. You don't know how much, but you have plenty, all right? What's 0 plus 2.4? 2.4. What's uh, 0 plus 2.4? 2.4. So the question is, how much oxygen did I use? Will you tell me, look down this chart, how much oxygen did I use? Oh, I used 3.6, all right? How many moles of each product did I make? 2.4, I guess, oh, there's my bell. All right, I made 2.4 moles of both. So um, I'm going to leave you here, all right, with your notes. What I want you to do is look at this page right here. This is page two of your homework packet, all right? So please uh, work on this, fill it out, practice how we did that. Divide by what you have, multiply by what you want. Remember to do that, all right? And then Ms. McCauley has a video where she goes over this. Folks, be smart. Do it first, then see how she did it, okay? So we'll see you next time. Don't wait to be great. Bye-bye.